Hello everyone, my name is Legend Ronnie and this game is Rise of Kingdoms. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about which legendary commander is the best for free-to-play players to actually progress in Rise of Kingdoms the best way. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms video. I want to talk about legendary commanders for free to play which are the best ones that you can actually work on so you can actually progress the best way in rise of kingdoms and in the same time i want to explain why i'm actually advising these commanders and we're going to explain if you actually have choices because i know there's infantry players out there there's calf players out there before i'm, I'm gonna get the, into it since we are talking about legendary there is a couple of things I need to show you which are very very crucial whenever you try to upgrade one of the legendaries and that is approximately the stars that you actually need to upgrade those legendaries and you want to know the sculptures that you need to upgrade the legendaries. Furthermore you want to know about the skills. You in general each and every legendary you want to keep them with one star until you max their primary skill. Any legendary that you look at that you want to check or you want to look onto their primary skill is the most important one if you unlock a legendary to let's say his second star then you do not guarantee that you're upgrading his primary skill once you unlock his second star you unlock his second skill meaning that the skills can actually drop on the second one meaning that you have to spend way more sculptures to actually maximizing his primary skill this is why it's the rule of keeping commanders at one star. Also, the equipment only applies from the primary commander, so you want to make sure that your primary commander is equipped with the best that you have or the best that you want. Also, talents only apply from the primary commander, so this is also a very important part of your commanders. Commanders play the most important role in Rise of Kingdom, so you want to make sure that you have done the things right. Now, we have to consider that with the recent changes to the game which apparently is not being changed yet hopefully it's going to be changed in the future you can only be helped a thousand times meaning that the so-called free healing it's kind of gone so that kind of gives a huge impact on the free-to-play community on their ability to fight all that being said you want to take in consideration just battling with fewer marchers if you're being a free-to-play just going out with five marchers as a free-to-play in light and darkness kvk it's no longer gonna be a thing you need to take out your strongest marchers and that is going to involve legendary commanders when i've done a video a long time ago i've done a video about the top three expertise legendaries and literally that video still stands on that video it was ysg it was genghis khan and it was richard as the top three expertise commanders that video still stands as the best three legendary options even for free to play player ysg it's non-questionable one of the best legendaries that you can work on the reason is very simple once you obtain his expertise he has a circular area around him and you can very easy farm barbarians aoe farm barbarians if you're not doing that as a free to play then you're doing something wrong this is how you should actually spend your time in rise of kingdoms you need commanders that will actually help you generate more resources for that reason ysg is one of the best commanders that you can always work on and expert the second commander that i actually advise is genghis khan my talents or on ysg are like this because i usually just use him in the sunset canyon that's the only place i kind of use ysg right now as primary and in the sunset canyon i want him to generate as much rage as possible if you want to use him as garrison this is for a flag garrison if you want to use him as garrison i would recommend to put sansu primary and put ysg as a second in command i've done a video why you should put epic primary and legendary as a second especially when the legendary is a huge nuker I'll post a card on the top about that. If you want to use him as a garrison, you have an option here, but this is for flag. And the other options that, that you can actually go for archers is this one. For field battles, I would be more inclined to go with this talent tree if you want to use him as primary. Or if you want to use, let's say, Kusunoki as primary, because YSG already has a rage engine. But in the Sunset Canyon, I want to get as much rage as I, as I can because pretty much is the skill damage so as much skill damage as you can do 
the faster you can AOE the marches down. So I like Feral Nature a lot in the Sunset Canyon. Now the second legendary that I recommend for free to play is Genghis Khan. And I always get these questions as why Genghis Khan to be as the second max expertise. That's because Genghis Khan is one of the most powerful nukers that there is in the game. As nuker, I consider commanders that do skill damage. Now, why I'm always advising Genghis and YSG as to be the first two commanders that are free to play one to expertise because they are pretty weak, right? I mean, if you take them on the battlefield, they get swarmed in in five seconds, they go poof. Because if you are a free-to-play player, you don't need to think so much about field battles. That's kind of the reality, and I know some of you enjoy that part of the game, but we're going to get to that point as well. What you need to consider the most as a free-to-play is how to generate more resources in Rise of Kingdoms as free-to-play. And when I'm talking about resources, I'm not just talking about the resources that you have displayed on the top about food, wood, stone and gold. When I'm talking about resources, I'm talking about speed ups as well. I'm talking about boosts. I'm talking about equipment and materials. I'm talking about sculptures, action points, experience cards, stars. This is what I'm referring when I'm talking about resources. Everything else is included. Either you use it to power up your account, to get your building power up, to get your technology power up, to get your troops power up, to get your commanders up. And how you can actually do that, right? Because Genghis and YSG, they are max skills. You probably have them already. You probably worked on or you plan to work on them. You have the events. You have events like the Silk Road. We have Shadow Legion. You have Seroli event. You have Ion's Ballads. You have various other events which are all included how you can actually generate more resources by that well for example in the shadow region you do Sansu YSG as a garrison and you can get more ranks or your alliance will be able to do higher difficulties right you get to the hell difficulty and you want to beat that hell difficulty how many players have actually succeeded beating it with Richard and Charles or Charles and Constantine next to none everyone is beating shadow region with skill damaging commanders. Sansu and YSG will actually get to that. You'll generate more action points, you'll generate uh, more equipment, blueprints, and so on. These are all resources that you need in Rise of Kingdoms, especially speed ups if you're a free to play player. Now, here comes Genghis Khan. You have the Seroli, you have the Iron's Balance. These are the most two used commanders over there. Probably some say, yeah, but you need a tank. Richard is good. How many tanks can you actually use? It's just one, right? The rest is usually DPS. So the majority, 75%, should be DPS, which is Genghis and YSG included. Then you have the Silk Road. There's a lot of players that don't reach the 2000 points in the Silk Road. If you don't know, you need to reach a certain of individual points by damaging the barbarians that spawn or the bosses that spawn. You need to damage those bosses and those barbarians to actually reach 2000 points and get the highest rewards available on the Silk Road. Even if you don't do on Hell, even if you do Hard or Nightmare or whichever difficult, you still need to reach the 2000 threshold. So if you don't have damaging marches or damage marches that do a lot of damage, then you will not be able to get the rewards or the maximum rewards. Then it's everything. There is an explanation for each and every other events there is in the game. That's why Genghis and YSG kind of helps the best. From all the commanders, that it is released right now because so far this is the latest commanders that have been introduced Theodora and YSS so I'm including all commanders right now is still Genghis and YSG as the best investment I still use Genghis and YSG almost everywhere in all these events I still use them you have the Karak bosses you're probably thinking Richard Richard doesn't do damage Richard is very tanky he does a lot of counter-attack damage he survive <laughs> he, he can take punches but he doesn't do damage if you don't do damage then the Karak bosses will kill you right so if you actually have the damage if you have the commanders to do the damage to the Karak bosses then you'll be able to beat them and the alliance will get rewards you get to the next boss and so on so is damage or actually having damage is actually more important yes it is for free to play because you need to generate those resources these two commanders can be used for battlefield as well so if you're actually going onto the battlefield or you want to use them on the battlefield they're very good and this is the part where i'm actually bringing richard because everyone is considering or 
especially at the beginning of the kingdoms to work on Richard just because the heal is so great it keeps the march on his defensive and defensive marches they do give you less of severely wounded so you do have less hospital builds usually in general which is infantry infantry they do have less hospital builds if you get your Genghis and YSG smashed for example you should expect around 100,000 hospital but if you have like a Richard and Charles which are being smashed, you should expect about 50 to 60,000, so almost half, just because they are very defensive. But who does the highest damage if they are being left alone? That's Genghis and YSG for sure. Now, how you can do a Richard? My choice was to do Richard as you see him right now, 5111. And for that reason, I also kept him at 5 star. I didn't see the reason to get him to 6 star since I didn't have plans in the future to invest on him. My recommendation would be to actually go as a 5-5 five five on your Richard. It does look very juicy to actually get the third skill maxed, but you're actually getting 10% attack and 10% defense extra. For the amount of sculptures you have to spend, which if I'm correct, it's about 190, that will be too expensive. So if you do a 5-5 five five Richard, I would say that should be good enough for a very long time and you keep him at five stars so you can actually have a tanky march on the battlefield but after that my recommendation is to max YSG and Genghis because they are very very good to actually generate resources this is what it is very important for free to play players to actually generating as many resources as possible without spending because that's why you are free to play spenders it's a whole different story this is good recommendation for spenders as well low spenders medium spenders is definitely very good recommendation after that you get later on into the game you're probably thinking what should be the next goal right because you're probably maxing Genghis and YSG your goal should be while you're maxing Genghis and YSG should be your VIP level in the same time because you're probably starting from the beginning you don't know where you should actually spend your gems you need to be very careful where you spend your gems as free to play. They are a premium, a real, real premium resource for you. My advice is that VIP level is kind of one of the best investments. VIP 14 and now because of the helping healing nerves that have been introduced recently, VIP 15 should kind of be a goal even for free to play players. You might say, well, bro, I'm playing for 600 days and I'm VIP 12 or 13. You're do doing something wrong or you're not very active into the game, so you shouldn't have high expectations. But if you're a very active free to play player, then Castle and VIP should be your two priorities. I would say that Castle is only a priority once you get closer to the max technology. Eventually, even as free to play, trust me, you will get to max technology. By just playing the game, just getting resources from various events, the speed ups they do stack up, including the resource speed up, so you will eventually need to invest in your castle. But keep in mind VIP level, it's so, so important, VIP 14, for free to play, to start generating those three legendary commander sculptures. So always keep an eye on the VIP level as well, while working on your castle in the same time. I would say that all the gems should go on the VIP once your castle is 25. And the castle to 25, you can delay it as much as you can. On the academy, you only need castle to 25 when you want to do your latest research to 10 out of 10. So if when you're getting close to your T5s and you want to do this research and this research, 10 out of 10, I've, I've done video about that as well. I can post cards on the top. That's the only time when you actually need castle to 25. So going further into the video, let's say you have Genghis, you have YSG Max, you're probably playing for one year or one year plus, and you're thinking which commander you should actually work on. Well, that's the moment when you actually have to choose which specializations you want to go further. That's the moment when you actually want to choose your commanders for field battles. <laughs> that's why I actually sound really, really weird, but you want to take the right steps as a free to play in developing your account you want to develop the commanders that will actually help you throw out the game and actually help you develop your account this should actually be the steps that you want to take and that's why it's ysg first that's why it's gang is second and as a small investment for field battle you can get richer because i know everyone is really fond about field battles as well kvk ruins and so on so richard can actually help you on to enjoy those kind of moments as well a 5-5 richard that's why i mentioned about him now the next steps 
is obviously going to be choosing your field battle marches like choosing your specialization so this is where you can actually go infantry and this is where you can actually go cavalry i would say that archers shouldn't actually be a specialization for free to play it might sound really hard but that's actually the truth the archer commanders that are being introduced into the game from what i've noticed so far they are mainly just for rallies or garrisons not so much for field battles so it's really not a free to play thing to just go on archers you need to work on either calves or infantry now by the time you have genghis and ysg maxed there's probably commanders like guanyu release probably commanders like attila release and that should actually be your next focus so if i would want to go an infantry player as a free to play once i get my genghis and ysg maxed I'll probably go on Guan Yu and Alexander. Mostly I would max Guan Yu first, or at least I would max his first skill and then hope for the best to get as much as possible on his third and on his fourth. And it would be the same for Alex. I would do a 5-5 five, five Alex for the start. And then I'll see on the rest where you can do a 5-5-5-1 five, 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 Alex. And then you'll see on the rest. But obviously because of the healing helps that it is right now you want to expertise these legendaries is very important doing just small investments and trying to go out with as many marches as possible a spirit to play will just not gonna work you need to bring out your best marches so if you want to go infantry and you obviously want to start using those commanders my recommendations to is to go with Guan Yu. Now, if you don't want to go with Alex, you can actually utilize your um, YSG and you can do a march like Guan Yu and YSG, which is also a very good. Not very, very tanky, not very super tanky, but Guan Yu can also have auto utilities. Guan Yu can have utilities like PVE as well, where it will help you generate again more resources by doing more damage. That's why I'm advising damaging commanders because these commanders can also help you generate more resources exactly what i was talking at the beginning of the video which is actually the best thing for free to play Do going on commanders like richard and charles martel and constantine which don't actually do damage they are just tanky they won't actually help you so much on the long run in the game if you want to go calves you have options and you really have quite a lot of options double c is someone that you get from the gold key so double c will probably be like five something 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 on my alt account i'll give you as an example is, is five four five one i was very unlucky just keep getting the second skill but i maxed the third skill so that's actually good because i'm not spending sculptures on my alt account charles martel on my alt account is five five two three or something like that so at some point you will get more legendaries even as free to play else it also becomes more upgraded so you can actually add even more legendaries to your marchers if you want to bring more marchers on the battlefield so this is the reason you actually don't have to in invest in some of the commanders because some of the commanders will become leveled up just by themselves in terms of skills now as a cav player the reason i said you have option is because of saladin now saladin is pretty much 95 percent operational once you get in 555 so he's kind of the best commander that you can actually do a minimum investment and then move on because with the first three skills and max you get the most out of it when you want to do field battles the fourth skill is purely just conquering whenever you attack a city garrison so it's just specific for that it, you don't really need it and with his expertise you only gain another 300 damage factor which is not a huge deal about it to get his expertise and reducing more march speed and more healing 555 sardine it's actually a really good investment if you if you want to go as a free to play player but another option is going for attila and takeda which might sound crazy going for attila and takeda but it is the truth when my takeda was 5551 and my Attila was 5-2-3-2. Two, two. I was literally demolishing anything. Like I was doing rally with those two commanders. And they were better than anything else that I had. So they weren't even expertise commanders. But my Attila was level 60. And they were demolishing. So it is actually worth it to invest in Attila and Takeda as a free to play. If you care only about field battles and battles. Because that's kind of the only way you can actually benefit the most out of Attila Takeda. Then yes. You can do a 
five something 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 Attila hope for the best to get the third and the fourth skill because these are the most important from Attila the second one is just specifically for rallies but the third and fourth is what you need and then get him to level 60 then hell yeah you can definitely have a very powerful uh, Attila Takeda and Takeda with the first three skills maxed he's really powerful and if you're asking which one you should actually expertise from Attila and Takeda Takeda should be the first one because Takeda actually empowers Attila with his expert because you do extra normal attack damage when you do the first skill of Takeda which lasts for 4 seconds so for 4 seconds every time you do it you do extra damage and then it's the, the 4 skill which actually gives you some defensive more defensive options for your Attila Takeda but the first three skills are kind of the most important for Attila Takeda so that's why it's a 5 5 5 1 Takeda and it's a five something 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 Attila. So you have Saladin as an option that you only need to max his first three skills and then you have Attila Takeda. If you're gonna be a calf player or if you wanna be an infantry, you have Guan Yu and Alex. I, I would say that this is very doable as a free to play player, but it all depends how active you are as a free to play player. It all depends on how much time you invest into the game because if you cannot spend money into the game, then you need to spend time into the game. So I do hope these advices kind of help you and if you actually want to see more about my commanders there is the commander spotlights where you can actually check the talent trees or you can check everything else. This should be the future even for free to play. The reason I'm saying that this should be the future is because of these healing changes that are happening right now. You cannot take on the battlefield as many marches as you would or want to like in the past like epics actually hard to say it but it's kind of the truth should actually not be used on the battlefield anymore because will definitely just bring you a lot of severely wounded that is kind of the reality as it is right now probably in kvk1 you don't have options and you'll have to bring epics probably kvk2 a little bit but starting from kvk3 you should have legendaries and even as free to play if you can only bring one march or if you can only bring two marches and that's it that should be the marches that you actually come to field battle because speed ups will be very limited and just filling up your hospital you will not be able to empty it for free as before so you want to make calculated decisions as free to play as another march that you can actually do for free to play it's obviously with ethelfled leading because you'll max ethelfled anyway as free to play regardless the time if it's take longer or less and you can do with YSG because he should be your first legendary that you maxed. Now, I hope that this video will actually give you some good insights and you actually understand my point of view, why I'm always advising these commanders and why route is the best road to go as a free-to-play. Until next time, this is your boy Jeroni signing off. And you could probably consider this as an ultimate guide for, for free-to-play legendary. I don't know. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you. Peace out, yo, and take care. See you on the next one. Stay safe out there.